Ava and Daw Pitts Duo. And today we are going to be showing you how to turn your boring side dish into the new star of the show. Today we're showing you how to make mashed potato chantilly. I know the name sounds a little funny, but it's okay. By the time we finish, you're going to want to try it at home for the holidays too, okay? All right, so some of the ingredients for the mashed potato chantilly, you're gonna start with four roasted oats, as well as whipping cream, cayenne pepper, salt and pepper to taste, whole milk. Then you're gonna start out with the cheeses. You have Kobe Jack cheese, Italian six blend cheese, Swiss cheese, some onion for the garnish, or green onion to be exact and as well as the canola spray, just to make sure it doesn't stick to the pan, okay? So we're gonna start with go ahead and peeling our potatoes. All right, the potato has been peeled. So now we're gonna go over to the sink to go ahead and get it rinsed off. All right, so now that the potato has been rinsed, we're gonna go ahead and chop it up and go ahead and place it in the boiler. But inside the boiler, I do already have some water and some salt, just to make sure that the potato can cook a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and turn these on medium so that it'll take maybe about 30 to 45 minutes for them to cook. Alright, now once they're done cooking, so as you can see, we have our potatoes, we have a little bit of a mixture, we have the rest potatoes as well. So we're going to go ahead and pour the water out in our strainer over here in the sink. So now that they're all taken out, we're gonna go over here to the to the counter and start doing some and giving them some TLC. So look. Now, mom, I think I'm gonna need your help with this part because I know that I am not a good whipper. So I'm gonna need your help, mom. Can you come here? Thank you so much, You're doll. Welcome. Always gotta leave it up to the divas to get it started. So we're just gonna put our potatoes over to the side. And what we're going to do next is that we're going to use our whipping cream. Make sure your whipping cream is cold, okay, ice cold. We're going to be using our hand mixer because we, what we have to do, we have to turn this liquid into heat. What we're trying to do is get air into our whipping cream. Oh, look at that turning. Oh, yeah. Look at that. If you have a hand whip, it will still do the same. Still do the same. We're just trying to get some air to aerate. Oh, yes. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yes. There we go. Because we want our mashed potatoes light and fluffy. Yeah. Look at those peaks. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right, there we go. That only took just a few minutes. There we go. So if you don't have one of these hand mixers, this is a brawn. It's the best thing ever. All right. So we're gonna use this when we get ready to fold in to our mashed potatoes. So I'll just leave that there for the moment, okay? Then we're gonna get the potatoes that Aaron cooked earlier. And we're going to put them into our bowl. I think that we're going to add in the rest of our butter, cheeses, milk, and we will add in our whipping cream just to fold in at the very, very end. Okay? Cheese. Cheese is my favorite. I must admit, I am a cheese fanatic, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to add in about a cup of Colby Jack. Mmm, I can smell it already. It smells so good. Then she's going to add in about a cup of Italian blend. Like Swiss cheese on a sandwich. I know I do. So wait, now is it time for the hard part, Mom? Is it time to mash the potatoes? I'm afraid it is. Aww. Aww. You need some help? 
I need some help. Tag. Okay. All right. Tag, tag. Here we go. Tag team back again. How about that? All right. So what we're going to do, because <clears throat> it would just take too long to just mix all this up by hand. So, oh, no. That's not what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to use our same hand blender that we used earlier for the whipping cream. So here we go. And if you see that you don't, if your potatoes are not getting smooth enough as fast as you would like, just stop and add a little bit more milk. Thank you, my assistant. You're welcome. You're gonna continue to keep blending until it gets nice and smooth. of twice baked baked potato the stuffing that goes in it twice baked but this is just so much better look how that's coming together oh yeah look at all the good cheese oh, yeah baby some good cheese up in there please testing time yes i brought your spoon oh thank you okay let's, let's try it eat. here we go mmm Mm. What do you think? I think it brings a little bit more salt and pepper. Okay. Let's, br that, let's, let's, let's bring it on. If you bring the salt and pepper back over, let's okay. bring it on. And while Erin is doing that, that whipping cream, now I'm going to fold it in just a little bit. All right. I came back with the salt and pepper. And we're going to call what that's called cutting it in. I'm going to add just a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper to taste. We don't want to add a lot. You guys, I'm always the assistant. It never fails. Of course. Never fails. It's always better when you have an assistant. So, Erin, mm -hmm. what are some of your enjoyable moments about cooking in the kitchen? Mm, some of my most enjoyable moments will actually be right here in this kitchen every holiday or party that we have um like i was saying i'm always the assistant i'm always cooking decorating helping with cleanup even as a young child she always had us in the kitchen with her just kind of like learning how to do small things and it, it definitely rubbed off on me because going out to college like I didn't have a, a, an apartment or a house where I had to cook. I always ate in the cab. But now that I'm growing up, like I'm like, oh, I do know how to cook that. Or I would call her and say, hey, mom, how do you cook this? I'm trying to remember. Can you help me? Um, so just growing up, being in this kitchen has taught me so many great life lessons from how to cook and just life in general. I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, mom, so yes. what has been one of your favorite memories or moments while being in this kitchen and teaching us how to cook? Well, you know what? I learned really how to cook with my grandmother. And she was the type of woman who only let you come in her kitchen to look. She never, ever, ever let you touch a utensil. You couldn't peel anything. You couldn't wash anything. You only had to look. So I learned my cooking skills just by looking. Not by doing. Some people learn by doing. I only learn mine just by looking. I have just enjoyed, you know, the skills that I have learned from my grandmother just by watching and trying to, you know, share those skills with you and your sister. Especially during holiday time because that's when we do most of our cooking. She's right. Our house is famous for mm -hmm. our Christmas breakfasts when we hold all of our family over and it's always just a great time. Alright, so she cut up some green onions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. And it's just for, for flavor and a, just a little bit of color. And we're going to be putting some more on the very top to garnish. Okay. Alright, you ready to put it in? Oh yes, I'm ready. Alright. I'm ready. Here we go. Nice and airy. Oh, mashed potatoes never taste and look so good. Yeah. You guys are going to thank us later, I promise. Yes. 
And also, you can add bacon to this as well. If you guys like a little bit of flavor in your mashed potatoes, just like if you were doing like a mashed potato with the bacon on top, you guys can add bacon to this. But some of our family members don't eat pork. So we just took the bacon out just to let you know. All right. So as you guys can see, everything is out of the bowl. I think we did a magic trick because there was a lot of potatoes in there, Mom. Yeah aerating it <laughs> when you put the air in it, it <clears throat> yeah fluffy it makes it fluffy that's correct so at the very top you just swirl it around and don't worry because guess what it's all going to fizzle out at the end okay all right so now what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and get a little bit more cheese to put on top a little bit more of the cayenne pepper that I put in earlier. And then we are also gonna put just a little bit more of the green onions to garnish, okay? <laughs> so now we're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. We're really just trying to get the cheese golden brown. So that way, once you take it out, it'll have a nice crisp crisp on it, okay? All right, it's been 25 minutes. So let's look at our Chantilly mashed potatoes. Ooh, I can't wait. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so I'm turning the oven off. Oh, oh, wait. This should be a smell of vision right here. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, don't. Oh, Lord. Jesus, come to mama. Let me just get you out of here. You just trying to jump all out of here. Ooh, wait. Yes. Okay. Ooh, wait. Trying to jump out the pan here. Look at that. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Wee. Smelling so good. All right. I'm going to take it over to the counter so that we can garnish it and finish up this nice recipe because I'm ready to eat. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to eat. Karen, my dog, I need some assistance in helping me garnish this mashed potatoes turned all the way up yes. all right i'm coming i'm coming so we're gonna take the green onions and go ahead and just lather them on there just to add a little bit of color and now we are all done making the mashed potato chantilly now mommy gotta get in here and look at our masterpiece now oh snap oh, what what yeah y'all it looks so good and it probably oh. tastes even better oh. I hope you guys have enjoyed yes. spending this time with us, turning your boring side dish into a new shining star. Yes. Brought to you by your new favorite, Diva and Doll Duo. Duo. We hope you guys enjoy your holidays and thank you so much for joining us. See you soon. Bye. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye.